Well, I mean, let's swing security on 15. <laughs> Needle spray. Electroshocker. Electroshocker. Or electroshocker, <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Not what I wanted to see. All oh, right. my God. <laughs> to my hand. I th oh, I, Pete. I thought I'd lost. I thought I'd, <laughs> I thought I'd lost. Uh, I was hoping you had, but it's okay. Um... <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it feels very good to be going into episode six here with another win uh, on our tally. And oh my God, we managed to stop Pete from snowballing into his own win streak, especially with the appearance of Death Exmon, an alt art, no less. <laughs> still shaken uh, after he dropped that bomb on me. Uh, but you know, basically now we're at the point in the series where I think both of our decks are reaching an acceptable power level. Uh, certainly with Pete getting access to Death X, we both agreed uh, it would be fair for me to open the Imperial Dramon starter deck at this point and really kind of flesh this out. Otherwise, it, it's just gonna be a slaughter uh, going forward. That said, I think there is a better way. So hear me out. I got super drunk recently, and in my attempts to make my deck more consistent, I thought it would be good to pick up two copies of the Ragnalordmon starter deck. Why did I do that? Well, I already bought two copies of Jessmon, so that would be boring, and buying additional copies would do nothing for me, so I thought, hey, let me pick up the new cards while I'm at it and get access to one additional Davis from each box. That was the plan initially. I was super drunk. I was not thinking it out. But then when I got home, I remembered that I pulled this dude. I pulled an alt art Ragnalordmon out of BT 1.5. So, I actually have an extra boss monster here. And when I started looking through the gigantic pile of set 1.5 cards that I have access to, I realized that I've actually been picking up a decent number of legend arm pieces. I got some searchers, I got some of the level fives, so I've got at least one of each of the OG level sixes, I've got the OG baby. So it turns out I actually have the materials to build a decent Ragnalordmon deck. So I think just for the lulls and also to give a little more time for the Imperial Dramon deck to flesh itself out, I am gonna go into things with Ragnalordmon this week. It turns out I actually only have one pack of 1.5 left. So with a little bit of luck, I'll get a few more pieces uh, out of this general line that I need. And I should be able to throw together something that should be able to go toe to toe with Pete's deck. Uh, in theory, if I establish this guy or the big guy in the box here, uh, I can stop Pete from just suspending and swinging over my dudes, I can clear his field, and I can actually just consolidate everything into one big boss monster, which will make Death Exmon less of an issue. That is the theory. I don't know if it'll work. <laughs> I, I have my doubts, um, but I think at least for this week, since I spent the money anyways, I'm not gonna go back and just get, you know, some uh, new awakening. I'm not gonna start cracking these open, anything crazy like that. We're just gonna commit. We're going to say, nope, let's play Ragnalordmon, let's have some fun, and uh, let's see if, who knows, maybe this ends up being the sealed only deck to close the series out with. Probably not, I really just, I, I, I want to play Imperial Dramon, <laughs> I, I have damn well everything I need, but you know what, hey, for at least a week or two, let's take this guy for a test spin and see if we can uh, beat Pete's face in. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to see what we have access to besides the one pack of 1.5, which funny enough works out for the budget this week, uh, I'll have to see what I can get out of my victory packs too uh, and you know we'll we'll go from there and we'll try to build our big unbeatable boss monster so give me a couple seconds guys we'll see what we're gonna pull out and then what we can throw together all right ladies and gents well no surprise we know what we're opening this week uh, I've got one pack remaining out of the box of 1.5 that we started the series off with of course we've got the two starter decks which I will crack open uh, shortly after and then we have some bonus packs uh, from EX3 because we did manage to beat Pete last week so I'm just gonna get these out of the way for a second uh, and we'll see what we're gonna get here uh, ideally we'll pull some legend arm support out of here it would be nice uh, but I'm not gonna hold my breath of course and then here we're really just looking for an extra X V Mon uh, to complete our playset for when we do start playing Imperial again. So without further ado, let's just get right into this here. Get that out of the way. All right. Well, <laughs> Legend Arms right off the top. Not really one we need, but okay. Uh, Blossomon, Volcanic Flare, Lava Greedomon. Uh, okay, another Legend Arms. Again, not one we really need. 
Digitama, Goldramon, Vikemon, Pyildramon, okay, an extra there is nice, um, but okay, kind of a bust. <laughs> I was hoping there'd be something nice in the last pack there, but uh, no dice, but this is good. We did need one more uh, to flesh out our line, and if Pete gets to the point where he can ban the one from the starter deck, this is a nice follow-up. Uh, so now let's see what EX3 has in store for us here. Uh, and really, the only thing I care about is pulling uh, another XVmon. I think there is an Imperial Dramon in this set as well, but uh, to be honest, it's not super necessary. Let's see if we get anything. Another Ikakumon's not bad. Andromon, Agumon, Dino Beamon. Okay, we're getting some free support. And, ooh, Venomiotismon as our super. That's less than enthusiastic. Okay, <laughs> but this is okay. Uh, it's always nice to have the extra piece. Hiya, okay. A little violent there, but that's okay. Uh, Wergarumon could be helpful if we go back to all fours. More Machine Dramon support. Hey, there we go. There's number four. <laughs> the rest can be literally whatever. Win rate and, ooh, War Greymon. And win rate 60%. Um, this is just whatever. It, it has its uses. Um, if we want to Evo up our Legend Arms, or literally anything, a little bit cheaper, but we don't like discarding cards generally. This is cool to have, I mean, as a super. Uh, the Blitz is handy, as is blowing up a blocker that could be relevant uh, for a number of decks that we're playing. And then we'll just pop open this last one here. Okay, well, let's hope we didn't... Oh. Mangled the one at the back a little bit there. That's not great. I really got to work on opening these things up. Togemon, Hagurumon, another Ware, Garudamon, Tentomon. Plenty for Pete in these. Piedmon. <laughs> oh, that's kind of sucks I mangled that a little bit, but there you go. We've got a super rare Diaboromon. I know that is a card Pete wanted to get his hands on, but it's not one we're looking for here, unfortunately. Oh, that really sucks. I really gotta be more careful with this, guys. I am so sorry, <laughs> but there you go. Um, this is interesting, honestly, like we could go up into this in the Ragnarord Mon starter deck if we wanna play. This isn't bad either, just as a nice pickup. Um, but of course, these guys are great, uh, and this is what we really needed out of the set. So, uh, altogether not too bad, and these just nice to have for the binder. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm really happy to just pull those out of here. This is uh, this is fantastic. This gives Imperial some options, even if Pete starts dropping the ban hammer on us. And this is just a cool tech and a card I kind of wanted to pull anyway. So now uh, I am going to very quickly open up just one of these to show you what's included. Uh, we don't need to open up both, honestly, and we'll just very quickly go through the cards that are included. Uh, so give me one second and we'll crack this guy open. Okay, there we go. So, <laughs> no surprises here, obviously. We are going to get access to some bonus tamers. They're all stuck together. I really don't like that, <laughs> especially because Davis is stuck to one of these. I think, yeah, he's stuck to the back of Ty. Um, so, Izzy, it's cool to have another one for the Ragnalord starter deck. It is uh, useful, but obviously Davis uh, having access to a fourth now <laughs> is fantastic. Uh, and of course, this is the meat of what we really want here. So we start off with our babies. Uh, basically, when you play a Legend Arms card by effect, which this deck does a lot, you gain a memory. So that is pretty good. Uh, we have the Zubamon here. This and the other rookie, basically they play themselves uh, and then they let you drop another Legend Arms card uh, for free uh, once you slot them under something else, which is pretty good. A lot of these guys basically have on-play effects where they tuck themselves under another Digimon in play and then you get some kind of bonus. Uh, this guy here is basically used to Jogress uh, very quickly into our deck boss. Uh, this, of course, is your main level six, lets you spawn a body on attack, which is pretty good, gives you security attack plus one as well. Uh, and then, of course, we got the big guy, Ragna Lordmon. So, uh, pretty cool. <laughs> Jogress from two <laughs> level sixes, a red and a black, or Evo uh, for six. You blitz on Digivolution, and then for every four evolution sources, uh, you can delete one of the opponent's Digimon in play with 20 play costs or less, and trash the top card of a security. So, I mean, this is pretty nuts. And then whenever a card is removed from either player's security, it unsuspends. Uh, so that is kind of bonkers. Uh, and really, obviously, what you're trying to build up into. Uh, we have a ton of black cards in here. Chikurimon is of particular importance because Pete now has access to Death Xmon. Uh, so this basically just says you can 
cannot reduce play costs, so that stops him from dropping the Death Exmon on us just willy-nilly. Um, there's some value vanillas in here, not really great. Uh, we're going to be dropping those almost immediately. Uh, Raji Ludomon is interesting because it's actually uh, invincible to destruction effects on the opponent's turn, and then it has the end of turn Jobris again as well. And then we have Brioi Ludramon, so this gives Ragnalorn Mod immunity to enemies' effects during the opponent's turn. So if I go into this guy, Pete actually can't force me to suspend it with uh, Hercules Kabuterimon's effect and then swing over it. Uh, he also cannot evolve into Susanomon and pop this. So he's going to have to have the removal spell. He's going to have to have um, Needle Spray first to suspend it and then Electroshocker to bounce it. So that's pretty powerful, uh, and of course, if we've just jogressed everything into this one big stack here, he can't really drop Death Exmon on us uh, to just get rid of Ragnalorgmon. So it basically turns this into a win button, but we have to have this in the stack. Uh, we got some removal, and then this spawns uh, a free level 7 or 7 cost or lower body uh, when you play it, but it is red and black, so it's going to be super hard to play. And then we just have our gauges here and the usual uh, stuff there. But really, uh, the idea is just to spawn a bunch of bodies, climb your way up as quickly as you can uh, into the level sixes, and then Jogress into this guy to blow up Pete's board. So that's what I think I'm gonna try to do. Um, I have some options. Uh, I have this one that I can go into without having to Jogress, which is really nice. He actually just tucks one of the level sixes underneath himself to make the Digivolution free. Uh, and then if I want to kind of flesh out out the level uh, sixes that I have access to, uh, then that's actually doable as well because I have Black War Greymon, for example, to act as a red and black for Jogress. I could go into this if I wanted to, to serve as the black. It has its own utility in getting rid of the blockers and it can, of course, blitz, uh, which is pretty nice. So yeah, all things told, uh, we have some options. There's also the Blitz Greymon that we pulled before, uh, which is a red, uh, it de-digivolves two. Uh, and still gets a lot of the nice inheritables that these guys also give to red and black, depending on whatever they're under. So we have plenty of options basically, but <laughs> you know, once we smush two of these together, uh, we'll really be in business. We'll be able to put this, the hurt on Pete. And honestly, if we get into this and we don't pass him too much memory as we're jogressing out, uh, we basically win the game. There's nothing Pete can do. If we go into this and he has enough memory to Needle Spray and then Electroshocker, well then we we cry <laughs> and probably just scoop right then and there. Uh, but you know, it's pretty nice. Um, the only other thing we really have to worry about is running into uh, Susanomon. Uh, or Death Exmon in security, but really, I mean, if we want to, we could just play two of the ties, for example, uh, in order to hit the 16,000 DP threshold, and then, um, you know, we're not afraid of anything. We don't even check options, thanks to the red uh, level sixes inheritable as well, so it's pretty nice, uh, and, you know, I, I gotta do it. I'm just gonna smush two of these together. Uh, we'll throw everything into one big, beautiful deck, and then we'll take Pete on uh, in what I hope will be uh, a match to remember. So yeah, let me go and uh, throw the deck together, guys, and we'll uh, we'll boot up the profile in a second. So the Ragnalordmon deck is pretty straightforward. The goal is basically to establish two Megas and then DNA Digivolve into the big guy here. Yes, it's a tall order, but, you know, the deck is literally designed to get you there. Starting off with the rookies, both the Zubamon and the Ludomon from the starter deck basically have the same effect. On play, they can tuck themselves under a Legend Arms Digimon or a Digimon of the corresponding color, red or black, in order to check the top card of your deck, and to borrow a term from Vanguard, Superior call a cost 7 or less Legend Arms Digimon to the field. Basically, they cheat out a level 5, which makes climbing up into 2 Megas a bit easier. But obviously, your luck and mileage will vary. I do have some of the old rookies here as well, the old uh, Ludomon and Zubamon, both of which let you search the top 5 cards of your deck for a Legend Arms Digimon and a Ragnalordmon. So you can get some extra value off of these, and considering the fact that you need Ragnalordmon to do well basically anything. Um, yeah, let's just say I wish I pulled a few more of these at least. The dedicated egg, Sukutomon, helps with the whole superior call thing by giving you one memory whenever you play a Legend Arms Digimon by effect. This is really nice because it'll often let you extend your turn, especially when you're going up into the Black Mega in this deck. So really valuable, a fantastic dedicated egg. 
that the level fives out of the starter deck, Raiji, Ludomon, and Duramon, both share an inheritable that lets you DNA Digivolve at the end of the turn. So if you have one of these guys under a Mega, and then you evolve the other one into the corresponding Mega, you can combine the stacks into Ragnar Lordmon and go for your big Oonga Boonga play. But the Megas you'll be combining into Ragnar Lordmon represent the ultimate sword and the ultimate shield. Starting off with the blade, we have Durandamon. It lets you check the top three cards of your deck when attacking, and Superior call a seven cost or less Legend Arms Digimon to the field. Now, if you tuck something underneath it, you'll get a 3000 DP boost and an extra security check to boot. When united into the Ragnar Lordmon stack, he lets the big guy nullify the opponent's option cards in security, which means you are pretty safe when you're going for the big swing. The shield, Brewe Ludramon, is basically a big invulnerable tank. When digivolving, you can do the same superior call shenanigans as Durandamon, except Brewe Ludramon effectively becomes indestructible when you tuck a source underneath it. And when it's within the Ragnar Lordmon stack, it gives the big guy immunity from the opponent's Digimon effects on the opponent's turn. So no getting blown up in my case by Susanamon, for example. Now, we actually run two Ragnar Lordmons in this deck. Last week, I managed to pull the gorgeous alt art of the original Ragnar Lordmon out of set 1.5, and let me tell you, this guy is a beast. It's a big, beefy body with security attack plus one and reboot built in, which is really nice. And in addition to the surprisingly low evolution cost of 3 for a level 7, you can actually tuck one of the two Legend Arms Megas when evolving into Ragnar Lordmon to essentially make that evolution free. So if I can stick this on the board, I might just win without ever having to DNA Digivolve into the other Ragnar. But the other Ragnar Lordmon is a monster in a class all of its own, and is arguably an auto win button if you can Jogress into it. Basically, when you Jogress or DNA Digivolve into this card, you Blitz, then you delete one Digimon and trash one security on your opponent's side of the field for every four sources that you have in the combined stack. So you can actually kill your opponent outright if they're at two security or less in most cases, and maybe three if you got a crazy chain going with your rookies and, you know, the gotchas and all that. Oh, and did I mention that Ragnar Lordmon also restands once per turn when a card leaves any security stack? Uh, this card is so stupid and I love it. <laughs> I'm so happy that they gave it a dedicated deck, but yeah, you gotta do a little bit of work to get there. And Izzy is the memory tamer of choice here because it can help fix the top of the deck and basically guarantee a superior call if I line my cards up correctly. I also hate getting choked to one, which happens quite a bit in this series, so Izzy does help there as well. Now, looking over the deck as a whole, I do have my concerns. Uh, I know this is probably nothing but jank, hasn't really done too much on the competitive scene outside of one very notable exception, but we do have a pretty significant lead over Pete as it is in the series, so, you know, I basically think we can afford to have a little bit of fun this week, try something interesting, uh, and just go unga bunga and try to take the big Joe Grest play if it comes up. Now, without further ado, let's jump into game one and see if we can get that big Oonga Boonga play, or, you know, find out that Ragnar Lordmon is the literal pile that everybody thought it would be. Okay, everybody, jumping into game one, I flip over my Sakutomon and absolutely surprise Pete, but if I'm honest, that's the most I'm gonna manage to do in this game. Pete and I proceed to play our usual game of chicken in the raising area, and, you know, he just so happens to get his Mega before I can reach one of mine, despite playing, what, nine in the deck? And adding insult to injury is the fact that I actually have a wee little body on board as I was trying to just get myself going, and I know Pete is going to be very thirsty to swing over it. So, you know, I try to draw out of it a little bit and then hopefully crash the little guy into security, but when I do, I end up checking a dual tamer, netting Pete some advantage, and of course leaving a vulnerable body on board. Naturally, on Pete's turn, Hercules Kabuterimon comes out and begins annihilating my security after swinging over my little dude, which makes me very, very sad. Now, I don't have the Jogress play on the crackback, which makes me even sadder, and actually I'm hampered by the fact that Durandamon has a very low 11,000 DP for a Mega, so while I could attempt to clear Pete's Mega stack while going for a gotcha, 
Uh, knowing my luck, I will not have anything to tuck, I'll lose my Mega, and I'll be even sadder than I already was. So instead, I'm forced to make a really suboptimal play here. I hard Evo the starter deck Ragnalordmon over Durandamon to Blitz into the Hercules Kabuterimon and clear the stack that way. But sadly, aside from Blitzing, Ragnalordmon gets none of his absolutely busted effects when you hard evolve him. And of course, you end up passing over a ton of memory because a 6 to Evo is just, well, uh, it's not cheap. And in fact, I'm actually forced to do this play twice throughout the course of the game. The second time that you're looking at here, I'm forced to go over a Black War Greymon. And needless to say, when you cannot pop anything and you pass over a ton of memory just for, you know, that one little Blitz play, you are asking to get rushed down, which is exactly what happens. So after flooding the board and coming in with a flurry of hits, Pete pretty convincingly takes game one. A game two goes a little differently. I actually managed to climb up into Breeway Ludramon thanks to Pete establishing a Davis fairly early on in the game and obviously passing over a ton of memory while doing so. And while I don't have the big Oonga Boonga Jogress play available to me right off the bat, I am able to play a bit of a stall game with Breeway Ludramon thanks to its high DP and temporary invincibility from bouncing among other things. Also, being a blocker helps to stave off any rush shenanigans from Pete. Pete, for his part, does get up to an Okuomon X, which is pretty scary on its own, and he even manages to stick a Pomumon as well, which actually floodgates all of my gacha effects. So, uh, really bad, hard counter for what this deck wants to do. But, Pete also can't find a Mega, which leaves my big stack in place, and obviously he can't really do anything like swing in and try to get some chip damage, or I'm just going to crush his stack on the crackback. However, Pete does catch a lucky break when I decide that I need to get a little bit of chip damage in and swing in with Breeway Ludramon. Now, I also did this to trigger one of the Inheritables and get rid of the Palmumon, but I am immediately punished by crashing into a Hercules Kabuterimon in security. So yeah, I'm pretty sad because this was a pretty huge stack, but thankfully I do have a level 5 ready to go, so I can just evolve that into a fresh Breeway Ludramon and then Superior Call a Raiji Ludramon from the top of the deck, leaving myself pretty well set up for the Jogress play, even if it won't be super impactful thanks to the overall lack of sources. There's a bit of back and forth here in the game, and after a little bit, Pete ends up sitting on a pretty wide board, with five Digimon ready to rush me as soon as my blocker is out of the way. And the fact that one of those five Digimon is Pomumon does not help me either. Uh, and you know what, guys? Only one of us is playing Death X, so, you know. Uh, but thankfully, I still have an answer in hand. I evolve up into the one-off Black War Greymon, clearing the two small bodies thanks to its one Digivolving effect, and then I can set up my first Jogress into Ragnalordmon. Finally, I get to trigger all of those amazing one Digivolving effects, essentially wiping Pete's entire board, save for a lonely Kabuterimon, and then I melt three of his security while I'm at it. Pete thinks for a little bit about what to do on the crackback, and after sticking it out for a turn, he eventually just evolves into Hercules Kabuterimon and then scoops it up, knowing that Ragnalordmon is just going to steamroll its way through to victory. We roll into game three, and it's not long before I find myself on the back foot. Pete has a Hercules Kabuterimon waiting in the raising area, and when I finally go into Breeway Ludramon, it whiffs on its gacha. Now, I know I'm going to lose my stack if I don't do something, so I make that oh-so-horrible desperation play of going into Ragnalordmon the old-fashioned way. Yes, clearing a body and chipping a security, but, you know, I also give Pete more than enough memory to royally piss me off. Let's promote... Drop and make a cabaretary mode for seven. Okay, and I'll snap over to three. All right, we'll draw. We will hatch. Okay. Did you evolve into Chikurimon? We will draw one. We'll digivolve Chikurimon into Tialudomon. Draw one, go down to two. 
Okay, now. Is there anything I really want to do here? Well, I mean, let's swing security on 15. <laughs> Needle spray. Electroshocker. Electroshocker. Or electroshocker, yes. Oh, God. Not what I wanted to see. All oh right. Oh, my God. <laughs> to my hand. I th oh, I, Pete. I thought I'd lost. I thought I'd, <laughs> I thought I'd lost. Uh, I was hoping you had, but it's okay. Um... <laughs> We'll just go into uh, Raiji Ludomon in the raising, uh, and you'll snap over to <sighs> three, and we will draw. Okay. So after that frustrating little combo, I find myself staring down two Hercules Kabuterimons with a potential Rookie Rush coming in as well, and obviously no Ragnalormon in play. And I, I am pretty bummed out at this point because Jogress plays are definitely off the board since Pete has a Pomumon out there and with things looking absolutely dire, I have just one last play to make. I evolve up into Durandamon, and then I evolve into the old Ragnalordmon. Now, thanks to this keeping my turn and him being a pretty beefy boy as it is, I am able to outright clear one of the Hercules Kabuterimon and then D-Digivolve the other. And then finally, uh, I can of course just slap a big fat rebooting blocker in Pete's face. Now, Pete is still getting really close to game here by slamming down level 5s that I can't D-Digivolve or pop, and he does eventually get back up into Hercules Kabuterimon, which lets him clear my last security. And sadly, unlike the other Ragnalordmon, this one can only block once and there's no restanding shenanigans outside of Reboot. So, you know, I basically have to hold my breath here and wait for the hybrid for game, but no hybrid comes down. No scary uh, hybrid play materializes, and so Pete just passes it back to me, and you know, with three swings on board after promoting out of raising, that's basically gonna be the game. So, uh, I can't believe that just happened. We actually got the win with Ragnalordmon. We got the win with Ragnalordmon. Uh, if this is not evidence of some serious power creep in the game, I don't know what is, because le let me tell you, the starter decks Pete and I kick the series off with, they, they do not slap like that. And, uh, you know, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We are up a solid five wins to Pete's singular victory. Now, I would be lying if I said we hadn't been a little lucky in the run so far, including in this episode. Uh, Pete not seeing the hybrid for game obviously made all the difference in the world there in game three. And obviously, without any new starter decks to rely on, um, Pete's going to have a little bit of a hard time giving me the run for my money that he otherwise would be able to. Now, after uh, basically getting the Ragnalordmon monkey off of my back, I think, you know, I've had, my, uh, I've had my fill of fun. I took both of the new starter decks for a spin, and I do think it is time to get back to the neglected pile of cards that I've been casually referring to as my Alforce Imperial Dramon Soup. It's just, you know, it's a more straightforward way to play the game, and Pete's deck is shaping up pretty well to be able to take that one on. Now, that said, with a little bit of luck, my return to booster packs next week should give me some semblance of direction for that uh, weird Allforce Imperial soup. Maybe we'll finally get a fresh Allforce, or perhaps a new Imperial Dramon will grace us with its presence. But whatever it is, um, I'm going to need to find it soon, and hopefully find it alongside an out to death Exmon that is not black or red because, you know, that card is still a thing. So, I don't know, may maybe maybe this is my way of saying uh, I will low-key return to Ragnalordmon one more time before the series closes out, but I'll definitely need to pull a little bit more support to make that pipe dream a reality. But anyway, that's it for me, guys. Uh, like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I will catch you all in the next one, and take it easy.